In this example, I'm going to show you how to calculate the statistical significance of the difference of two proportions. This is a more difficult computation to make. Conceptually, it's still easy, but the problem is there's a lot more numbers to calculate before we get to our final answer. So let's go ahead and look at our problem. I've gone to the general social survey and I'm using a question that asks people how important their job is to them, that, that for their life to be satisfying or fulfilling, they need, an, they need a good job. And I broke this out by high school and by college. And so when we look at our data here for our high school students, people with high school degrees, and people with college degrees, we can calculate the proportion who say that it's important to have a, a good job to make their life fulfilling. For the high school graduates, that number is 75.7%. And for the college graduates, it's 84.1%. So we observe a difference between these two averages or these two proportions, and we'd like to know if it's statistically significant. To complete this problem, we need to know our sample sizes. I had 630 individuals who completed a high school degree and 211 individuals who completed a college degree. I'm going to set my alpha value to 0 0.05 two-tailed. And I have my degrees of freedom equal to my two sample sizes added together, minus 2, which is 839. So very large sample. And I happen to know right off the bat that my t-score, my t-critical, is going to be plus or minus 1.96, looking it up in the t-table. Let's go ahead and look at the easy part of the formula, the, the conceptual part. We know that our t-statistic is equal to the difference of two statistics, p1 minus p2, divided by some standard error. I'm going to use sigma hat to indicate that it's an estimate of the standard error of the difference between p1 minus p2. The problem we have is estimating that standard error. So let's break it down into little pieces. Our standard error itself is equal to an estimate of a combined um, standard deviation times n1 plus n2 over n1 minus n2 and the square root. This value, sigma hat, is itself equal to p hat q hat square root and p hat is equal to n1 p1 plus n2 p2 over n1 plus n2 and q hat is equal to 1 minus p hat. So, our first step, or to solve this problem, we're going to need to calculate this standard error right up here. And to do that, we start by calculating an estimate of a combined p hat, and then our q hat, and then we solve for this standard deviation, and then we plug it into our formula for the standard error, and then we solve for our t-statistic. And we're going to take each one of these steps one at a time. Step number one. Let's solve for p hat. Our p hat is going to be equal to 211 times 0 0.841 plus 630 times 0.757 and we divide all of that by 211 plus 630. That is, we have N1P1 plus N2P2 divided by N1 plus N2. And solving this, we get 650 4.361 divided by 841, which is equal to 
seven seven eight zero seven four nine one and therefore our q hat which is equal to one minus p hat is equal to point two two one nine two five zero nine rounding these things I'm going to get a p hat equal to point seven seven eight and a q hat equal to point two 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 now we move on to step number two In step number two we need to solve or estimate this value which is equal to this quantity and based on what we did in step number one we know this is going to be 0 0.778 times 0.222 and we'll take the square root of all of that and we'll get a value of approximately 0.4155 four one zero three in step three we now are going to solve for our standard error we know that the standard error is given by the following formula and plugging these numbers in we get point four one five five four one zero three times two hundred eleven plus six hundred and thirty over two hundred eleven times six hundred and thirty and we take the square root and solving for this we get approximately point four one five five four one zero three times 0 0.0795 and this is equal to approximately 0 0.0330522 and I'm just going to write down that our, over here on the left that our standard error is equal to that value which we'll need in the final step. So the purposes of steps one and two are to provide the numbers so that in step three we can calculate the standard error. The last step is to go ahead and calculate our statistic for the difference of the two means. In step four we'll calculate our t statistic and just to review the formula we know that t is equal to the difference of our two proportions divided by the standard error which we calculated in steps 1, 2, and 3. We have approximately 84 percent of the college graduates indicating that they that it's very important to them to have a job that's fulfilling minus the approximately 75 percent of the high school graduates who have that same belief and we divide that by our standard error that we calculated in step three and we end up with a t statistic of 2.54 now that's a long ways to go uh, to get to this particular answer but let's put this in a graphical form that will help us understand what we've done here's a picture of our sampling distribution of the difference of two means we know that in the middle of the sampling distribution we have our two proportions, our, our two population proportions, our two averages. We know that when this is converted to a t-score it will be equal to zero. Using an alpha of 0 0.05 I know that if I move plus 1.96 standard errors and minus 1.96 standard errors so if we're really talking about these shaded in areas in this curve are our critical regions then 
if I get a T statistic that exceeds 1.96 or minus 1.96, as it falls in those shaded in regions, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. Clearly, 2.54 is a value greater than 1.96, so we reject the null. And here's what we end up concluding. We take a sample of high school graduates and a sample of college graduates and ask them what proportion of them would believe that a job is um, very important for making their lives fulfilling. We observe a difference in these two values with college graduates saying that it's that job being fulfilling is very important to them and 75.7% of the high school graduates. This difference we observe is large enough for us to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that these two differences are statistically significant.